Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 31st of January. And it's been quite a January as well. We've had situations in Russia with its uh, geopolitical tensions between itself and Ukraine. Obviously, other countries are getting involved as Russian troops are lining the border. We've had Federal Reserve announcements suggesting a more hawkish and aggressive uh, monetary tightening stance, because what they're basically saying now is that employment is roughly where they would want it to be, so they need to bear down on inflation. On the plus side, that may mean that the recent very strong economic uh, growth in the US can actually withstand some of that interest rate rise pressure, but it's the scale and the speed of the potential tightening, which has unsettled markets in a fairly big way. We've also, of course, seen a continuation of the rotation away from growth stocks and big tech in particular. And notwithstanding that we've had some very good numbers this week from the likes of Apple and Microsoft, um, investors do very much remain on edge for each of these reasons. So in the year to date, we've got a situation where the Dow Jones is now down 6%. The S&P 500 is down 9.2%. NASDAQ is down 14.7% and in correction territory quite firmly. And the FTSE 100 is holding its head above water. It's up about 1.5% in the year to date, largely underpinned by its defensive characteristics and also helped along by the uh, oil price. We've obviously got the big oil majors within the index. So turning to next week, um, oil does indeed feature in terms of some of the companies reporting. We've got fourth quarter, four year numbers from Shell during the week. Uh, the, the shares themselves are up about 38% over the last year, 17% of which has come just in 2022. Perhaps not surprising as the oil price continues to rise on some of those political tensions. The oil price itself is up 15%. So look out for the normal things with Shell. What sort of increase uh, in the oil price has had um, what sort of effect it's had on their cash flows. Obviously, they are moved towards renewable energy, how they are currently faring, and what they're doing about their net debt situation, which they were looking to reduce last year. Underpinning all that, 3.7% uh, dividend yield, obviously of attraction to investors. The other two companies reporting next week within telecoms, firstly, BT, got some third quarter numbers. Shares are up 51% over the last year. A few things going on here. Uh, we've got the Altis stake being built up, one of the BT's rivals. They're up to about 18%. Uh, at the moment. So obviously there's some M&A speculation going on there. We've got to, on the plus side, BT's pricing power, obviously particularly important in the current inflationary uh, environment. And at the same time, a projected yield dividend wise of 4%. Um, we've got the working from home boost, which obviously is playing into BT hands. And also the possibility that for some £600 million or so, they might still be looking to offload their BT sport arm. We've also got Q3 numbers from Vodafone. This has been a rather poorer performer for some time. Now, over the last year, the shares are flat. If you go back two years, the shares are down 18%. Again, there's the vague m and speculation within the sector has probably given the shares a little boost of late, nothing specific in terms of Vodafone itself, except to say that it's um, possibly going to be the subject of some consolidation, particularly in the Italian market, possibly also, of course, in the UK. Always being paid to wait investors here, dividend yield of 6%, um, not necessarily enough to offset the disappointment of the um, share price performance. One of the things holding that back has been the ongoing tax row with India and of course the uh, lower roaming fees as various lockdowns have taken their toll. So that should also be an interesting set of results. Thank you for watching, have a great week.